vessel navigator in the West Indies. So far in this series, we've learned how to measure the altitude of the sun and use that to determine our latitude at noon very precisely. Additionally, we've learned how to calculate the geographic position of the sun at any time. Well, it turns out you can calculate the GP of anybody. And in this episode, we'll learn about the star Polaris and how that can help us determine our latitude at night in the Northern Hemisphere. Measuring the altitude of Polaris is actually quite tricky. The first problem is identifying it. Polaris sits roughly over the North Pole, and all other stars in the sky appear to rotate around it. But finding Polaris is best accomplished using a well-known constellation such as the Big Dipper or Ursa Major. The leading stars in the basket of the Dipper point to Polaris. Alternatively, the constellation Cassiopeia, which is in the opposite sky as the Big Dipper, can be used as well. The second problem is actually bringing it down to the horizon. It's quite a dim star, but thankfully it's in an empty patch of sky. Typically by the time it's visible, the horizon is just barely light enough to bring the star down to the horizon. When measuring stars, we don't have to take into account the thickness of the star. In fact, we think of it as a pinprick of light an infinite distance away. So we put the center of the star on the horizon to make the measurement. In the Nautical Almanac, in place of the main correction for the sun, there's a different correction for stars and planets. Finding the geographic position of the North Star might seem counterintuitive. After all, it's over the North Pole, right? Well, not exactly. It varies quite a bit, and it varies enough to throw off your measurements. So we need to go into the Polaris tables with a different piece of information. It's called local hour angle. Local hour angle can be described like this. If this is the Earth's surface, and this is the equator, we know that Greenwich, England has its own longitude, and it's special. Additionally, we have some longitude, and it's just called longitude. Finally, we've recently learned that a celestial body has a longitude as well. That longitude is called Greenwich hour angle. What's left here is local hour angle. The angle between us and the celestial body is called local hour angle. And in the Western Hemisphere, it's simply Greenwich hour angle minus longitude. Calculating the LHA of Polaris is actually a two-step process. The first thing we need to do is calculate the GHA of Aries. Aries is not even a star. You can think of it as the Greenwich of the sky. It's a mythical point that we use to calibrate everything else. And we calculate the GHA of Aries the same as we do with the sun. We calculate it for whole hours and then increments. So it's a simple process involving the nautical element. Once we've calculated the GHA of Aries, we apply our dead reckoning longitude to determine the LHA of Polaris. Let's take a look at an example problem that'll help this sink in. Given a dead reckoning position and a time of observation, the first step is to apply our standard sextant corrections. After applying an index correction and a dip correction, we come up with an apparent altitude. As mentioned before, the apparent altitude tables for stars and planets are different than the sun. In this case, the apparent altitude correction is 1.0. Once we've determined our observed altitude, the next step is to determine the Greenwich hour angle of Aries in the nautical almanac. Since we're in the Western Hemisphere, we apply our dead reckoning longitude position to determine the local hour angle of Aries. In this example, it's sufficient to estimate the LHA of Aries. The formula for determining latitude by Polaris is listed at the bottom of the Polaris tables and it involves three corrections, labeled A0, A1, and A2. The A0 correction is taken from the LHA of Aries. The A1 correction is given for the approximate latitude, and the A2 correction is based on the month of observation. All these corrections have to do with the location of Polaris in the sky. After that, it's simply a matter of applying the corrections to the observed altitude to determine your latitude. Let's take a look at a second example problem. In this case, the sextant altitude is 24 degrees and 44.2 minutes. 
we apply our index correction, which is off the arc in this case, and the dip correction to come up with our apparent altitude. Again, we'll apply our apparent altitude correction to the stars and planets table and not the sun table. After all corrections, the observed altitude is 24 degrees, 42.0 minutes. In this example, calculating the GHA of Aries is slightly more complicated. We need to determine the whole hours of GHA and then the increments of GHA, similar to calculating declination for the sun. Always remember to use the correct column in the increments and corrections pages. Once we've determined the total GHA for Aries, we can apply our dead reckoning longitude to come up with a local hour angle of Aries. Next, we enter the Polaris tables with the LHA of Aries and determine our three corrections, A0, A1, and A2. The A0 correction needs to be slightly interpolated, All that's left is to determine our latitude by applying the three corrections to our observed altitude. When it comes to plotting our celestial fixes, it's perfectly sufficient to plot on a chart. However, charts can become cluttered easily, and oftentimes the scale is inappropriate. The universal plotting sheet is a way to create your own charts for celestial navigation fixes. The first step in creating a UPS is to plot the mid-latitude. This is the latitude closest to your estimated position. From there, filling out the neighboring latitudes is easy. Longitude is a bit more tricky and requires you to enter the outer ring of the table with your mid-latitude. Draw a perpendicular line and you've got your first longitude line. From there, it's just a matter of filling out longitude lines at the appropriate interval. The universal plotting sheet is typically used with an increment of about one degree per grid mark. However, different increments can be used with adjustments. To actually measure longitude, you need to use the longitude scale at the bottom right of the UPS. Again, plot your mid-latitude position and draw a horizontal line. This allows you to interpolate the longitude scale to your mid-latitude. All measurements should take place on the mid-latitude line, which is drawn in black in this case. This enables you to easily measure the width of any amount of longitude. When it comes time to plot our fixes from our Polaris latitudes, all we need to do is measure off the appropriate latitude mark and draw a horizontal line. Labeling celestial fixes properly is important. Always write the name of the celestial body and the GMT time of observation. This enables you to use that position line later for a running fix. In this episode, we've learned about the star Polaris and how to use it to determine our latitude. Additionally, we've created universal plotting sheets to help plot our celestial navigation solutions. This concludes the Getting Started with Celestial Navigation video series. Later this year, look for the Going Further series. Until then, practice with the learns, refer to the notes below, and happy navigating. We've recently learned that celestial bodies have their own longitude. Really? Is that how this is going to go today?